please make it loud for Chris Gray. Let's go, everybody. Having fun so far? So this show is two people doing 30 minutes of uh, comedy. Uh, so it's going to be like what you've just seen from the other comics, but it'll be six times longer. <laughs> not as well prepared, and you won't like it as much. I'm just setting your expectations. Uh, what's this? <laughs> Is this a Beauty and the Beast reference to you? <laughs> Is this a version of Beauty and the Beast where uh, the Beast has to like go to an open mic? So he has to, every laugh he gets, one of these pedals falls. <laughs> and then when he does a whole set, he turns back into human being. I think I'm padding out this set already. <laughs> Alright, I'll leave you on this. One minute, okay. That's 29 more of those. What's up with this thing? I, actually, I, I've done open mics here. I've never performed like in a show here, and uh, I, this is this is how. First of all, look how glamorous Hollywood is. <laughs> I have friends visiting from out of state that came to see this show, and I was like, there they are in the front row, uh, and uh, I was like, man, you're gonna see a really like glamorous Hollywood location. <laughs> So it's a uh, like storage container next to a grocery store. <laughs> but it, this is the philosophy that I have with like my space at home because I have an office at home. Humble brain. Um, it's an extra room and uh, it's echoey, right? And you know, of course, in pandemic, we were all required to start podcasts. So uh, it's echoey, and this is my with no acoustical training. This is the kind of stuff I would do. Like, man, it's so echoey in this room. Okay, let's put this triangle here in the corner. Ooh, that'll do it. This, this should cut out all the echoes from the whole room, and those up there too. Don't forget those. Uh, listen to how. Dead this room sounds. Oh, sound. <laughs> anyway, um, oh boy. Let's get some WD 40 on this. I, you know what? So, by the way, I'm gay. I'm just telling you that now because you wouldn't assume it. A lot of people don't assume Asian men are gay, they just assume we're asexual. You know, which is a weird assumption because there's so many people in China. It's like, how did we get to that? <laughs> And someone over there is fucking. Uh, but yeah, I so I bring that up because, uh, like Joseph mentioned, uh, it's cold, right? And so I put on this shirt, which is, you know, you wear this when you're cold in the fall and all that stuff. And as I'm walking, I'm like, this is this is maybe the butchest I've ever looked. <laughs> and I haven't shared. I let my beard grow out, so like I'm very. So for me to do like, hey, we're gonna get some WD-40 on. <laughs> I know you're conflicted, like, is this guy maintenance or is he tech support? <laughs> both, both. Uh, that's why I like to let all the energy just go to zero. <laughs> you know, reset. I am a gay man, uh, sorry ladies. I am married, sorry boys. I am married to a white man, sorry ancestor. <laughs> To a white man. Sometimes uh, Asian people think that uh, I've like by marrying a white guy that I've given up on my culture, and uh, I have. <laughs> There's only so many scallion pancakes I can eat, Mom. <laughs> and that's the biggest lie I will tell in this set tonight. <laughs> that there is an endpoint as to how many scallion pancakes I can eat. <laughs> That number is infinite. They made a little symbol to represent how many scallion pancakes I can eat, and it's a drawing of two scallion pancakes <laughs> next to each other. Uh, my husband is a, uh, a big guy. He is a bear. Woo! Right? I have friends from out of town. They are all bears. <laughs> And the way you know that they're bears is that when Joseph was up here doing stand-up, the whole front row was like, oh, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> what's, this little, what's this little 
bonus cup we got with the show. Let me sit at the, the edge of this metal chair. I'm gonna look up and, and beam and laugh at him. Check my growler to see if he's in 0 0.1 miles. Send him a wolf. <laughs> hope he says a wolf back. So hope, hope that he doesn't just send back thanks. <laughs> I don't know how many of you are gay, but if you're on gay dating apps, if you say like, hey, you're really handsome, and they send back thanks. <laughs> that's like the most hostile shit you've ever done. <laughs> oh, right. That's like, you're just fucking, tr it's so offensive. <laughs> it was like, in real life, I think it wouldn't be that offensive. I mean, because in real life, somebody would say like, hey, you're really good, but hey, thanks. They would give you that extra, you know, emotion to it, right? It'd be like, but if you went up to someone in real life, you're like, hey, you're really handsome, they're like, thanks. <laughs> That's how it feels, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, gay. I, I'm gay and uh, Asian. I'm sure you guys realize I'm Asian because you can see me. <laughs> I'm not like Evan, I'm like, oh, actually, I'm Mexican. <laughs> I've been my whole life. <laughs> That'd be interesting. My whole life, I insisted to my family that I was Mexican. <laughs> no, I don't believe you. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm Asian. I'm gay and Asian. I don't recommend that. Uh, or just, just interested silence. In <laughs> Tell me more about this problem you have. <laughs> yeah, well, here's the thing. There's a lot of gay men that are racist. That's the problem. There's a lot of racist gay men in the world. I did that, I said that the other day in Burbank, and the lady was like, what? <laughs> she was genuinely surprised that gay people could be racist. I was like, oh, you've never met gay people, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, they'll put in their profile, they'll, they'll put no Asians in the profile. Like, can you imagine having the gumption to like type that into a phone? Like, no Asians, and they're, they're very blatant about it. And if you confront them, and you say, hey, this is racist, they're like, no, it's not racist, it's just a preference. I was like, no, it's racist. <laughs> I did the math, and it's racist. Uh, but here's why. It's racist because, you know, here's the thing. If you look at me, and you're not attracted to me, one Asian man, that's fine. It's incorrect, but it's fine. <laughs> but if you extrapolate from that, that you're not attracted to all Asian men, plural, then that is racist because you're saying that we all look the same. Yes? Yeah. Yes. yeah. What do we think, class? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> people in the back taking notes, like, yeah, okay. Because uh, we, we don't do, well, by the way, after a recent show, someone told me that, uh, this is racist, they told me that I looked like Dr. Ken. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of racist what you just did. <laughs> you kind of went, ah, oh, so. <laughs> This is a racism. I can do that. Uh, yeah, I look like Dr. Ken if Dr. Ken was stung by 300 bees. <laughs> anyway, we don't do this for white guys. We don't like look at one guy you're not attracted to and then you decide I'm not attracted to all white men in general, right? No one ever does that. Nobody is ever like, uh, okay, I don't need to see Brad Pitt, okay? I've seen Kid Rock. <laughs> Nobody's ever, like, you know what? Don't talk to me about this George Clooney guy, okay? I've seen Mitch McConnell. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes, exactly. Someone out, is out there fucking Mitch McConnell. Oh. <laughs> what, if I, what if I was like, that's my type? <laughs> wow, y'all are really judgmental. I, I'm really into Senate minority leaders. I got to Google what Kevin McCarthy looks like. A little in joke for me personally, somebody who spends too much time on Twitter. Political joke. I actually don't even know if he's going to be the Senate Minority Leader. Let's move on. I have 21 minutes left. <laughs> All right. But yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, being gay and Asian is is a, is a weird uh, combination platter. <laughs> I'm like gay, gay, Asian, fat. I'm a lot of I'm a lot of things. I sometimes I feel like I'm a like if you it's a lot of characteristics. Like if you were playing D and D and like you rolled me as a character, you'd be like, yeah, this is too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> and I just get a human bard. <laughs> <laughs> Awful evil. 
I don't know what those words mean. You, you, you think I do by looking at you, but I don't. It's good to hear a cough from outside. So this is a good setup because we can hear the cars go by. Oh, there's the guy who took your ticket. <laughs> Behind the scenes here at the Hollywood Comedy. I, know. I don't want to break the allure of the magic of what's happening right now. <laughs> Uh, also, I was thinking, like, what at what point post-pandemic do you think we're gonna stop saying, like, thank you for coming out to support live comedy? Because, like, like I, it's very natural, like, it felt genuine when when we all clapped for it before, right? But, like, is it, will it be, like, 2040, and we're like, thank you so much for coming out for live comedy here amongst the ruins. This, you know, we're doing, like, a comedy show next to, like, a fire, uh, you know, a building's falling down. You can see me by the, the glow of the flames. And then like when I have three minutes left, they light a smaller fire at the back <laughs> to let me know that I have three minutes left. <laughs> Live comedy. Um, boy, what up? My husband is here today. Let's clap for him. I would say the, the A-list bear of the front row. <laughs> You're friends with them, right? Yes. Okay. I thought you just ran, walk, randomly walked in, and that this these five bears had like, like amalgamated. You. <laughs> I thought they had like annexed you into. Yeah. So anyway, these are bears in the front row. Everyone, on your way out, just like nod. <laughs> Give them some. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it should be obvious what a bear is. A bear is a big guy in, in the gay vernacular. Uh, well, but in gay vernacular, bear is queer for might have type 2 diabetes. <laughs> Every single dude in the front row takes metformin twice a day. <laughs> My comedy is very specific, pharmaceutically specific. Like, like, no one in the front row has recently washed the hose on their CPAP machine. <laughs> That's how specific, how specific my <laughs> And so I can say these things, okay, because I am hilarious. <laughs> Bears are, there's a lot of labels in the bear community. I'm considered a cub. <laughs> you know, I'm quite old to be a cub at this point. I mean, do cubs have arthritis? Okay. <laughs> in the real world, do cubs ever get arthritis? In the in the wild, uh, do cubs ever like uh, really got distracted by just a man? <laughs> that's listen, listen. That's the razor sharp concentration that I have. Okay, I can do comedy until. A man walks by, <laughs> and then the spell is broken. I'm just like, his shirt looks blue. Oh, oh, I lost my thought. It doesn't matter, that part wasn't written anyway. I'm improvising a lot of this, including this great riff on this. Uh, this was written. <laughs> this took me five years to develop. Before this venue even existed. <laughs> Release. I started working on, I mean, actually, the story Beauty of the Beast was re released a long time ago. So that doesn't really check out, does it? In the seven, the 15, the 14, the, in the thousands, I started working on this bit. When did Beauty and the Beast come out? Google that later, Siri. Uh, just to let you know how good my writing is, uh, when I was like, hey, I gotta do uh, 30 minutes, I looked at my little app here about, like, joke ideas, right? I'll just quote you the, the thing at the top of this list. It says, movie reference joke. Did y'all see that recent movie? Man, that one, one, one moment was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little peek into the process. <laughs> Man, did you see that one moment in that movie? That was crazy. And then like, where's my Netflix special? <laughs> and that, it's gonna be called That Was Crazy. That one moment in that one movie. Actually, that would be pretty funny. I'd probably watch that. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm a cub is what I was saying. Stop distracting me by laughing. This is not a comedy, this is a TED talk. Are we at some point gonna admit that TEDx talks 
are fucking fake. <laughs> you know, like, there were TED Talks back in the day, and that was a real thing organized by, like, the guy who started AOL or something. It was elite to get into a TED Talk. And then they were like, we can make a lot of money if we franchise this, and anyone can organize a TEDx talk. That's why they have, like, TEDx Scranton. And that kind of stuff. <laughs> TEDx talks, there's no such thing. I mean, there is a such thing. There's, you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, there's weird labels in the bear community. I'm a cub. There's things called otters. Otter. <laughs> I'm an otter. She was literally like, what? <laughs> You're pushing this metaphor too far. We're living it, dear. Uh, what is, uh, let's ask the front row. How would you describe an otter? Describe an otter as uh, someone that's mostly slender, uh, hairy, uh, maybe a little ponch. You know? Yeah, maybe a little ponch. Yeah, not just, little, little, just a thinner. Yeah. Well, you know what an otter is like in real life. So it's making it, a person. Yeah, making a person that sucks dick. <laughs> So yeah, there's weird labels in the bear community. There's bears, cubs, there's otters. It's a, it's a lot like the Boy Scouts, uh, except in the Boy Scouts, um, you don't get a, a label, you get fucked. <laughs> no, I messed that up. It's fine. I appreciate that you laughed at that. It's mostly just guys said the word fucked, but I said it in reverse, and it's still funny. That's how good I am. I write, I write punchlines that like like the movie The Usual Suspects. When you think about it too hard, it doesn't make any sense. But it still wins an Oscar. Best Supporting Actor, Kevin Spacey. In case you were wondering. And original screenplay? Mm -hmm. hey, look at that. Uh, Fucking, this is what comedy in Hollywood is. <laughs> You make an obscure Oscar reference and people in the crowd get it. That doesn't work in Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> Dayton, Ohio, they're like, what is a movie? <laughs> Just they have, that's elitist, they have movies in Ohio. Uh, it's funny when Joseph said Paul Blart Mall Cop Life because everyone in the front was like, I would fuck Paul Blart. <laughs> I would fuck the shit out of Paul Blart. This is like I have this is like their birthday party. <laughs> and y'all are like the parents. <laughs> You're just like, I guess I get this material. I mean they look like they're enjoying it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I have Asian parents, that's how that works. <laughs> Unless you're one of the lucky ones. Um, yeah, so I, well, well, I'll talk about my parents a little bit, and I just want to let you know that I know that this is like a sensitive subject, uh, because we're talking about family, and we're talking about, you know, growing up and dysfunction and that kind of stuff. And I know, like, it's a complicated issue, because on the one hand, Asian parents that come to America, they're dealing with a lot of stuff. They're dealing with, like, you know, learning a second language, a culture they don't know, being like spread out in a diaspora, all this stuff. And on the other hand, uh, Asian parents suck! <laughs> <laughs> That's the point counterpoint of this argument. Because I know that they have a lot of challenges, but also they're really bad at being parents. And I'm not talking about like all Asian parents, I'm talking about just 100% of them. <laughs> By the way, I've done this joke for like a year. Not once has a Chinese or Asian person from the audience been like, wrong! <laughs> Not true! I had loving Asian parents. Uh, like, my parents uh, very rarely hugged me. Oh, <laughs> That's why I'm up here. <laughs> they very rarely hugged me. Um, like, uh, I was in therapy, because uh, I have a website, and I just know how to get to betterhelp.com. <laughs> I have, a, web, I have a, a browser, and I listen to podcasts, and I took a promo code, and I was like, maybe this will help. <laughs> BetterHelp sucks, by the way. <laughs> but the ther therapist, like, dis they ghost on you, like, as often as, like, someone in an AIM chat room ghosts on you. <laughs> 
Uh, so this therapist asked me like how often I was hugged, which I did take as a personal attack. Um, but I literally thought about it. Uh, okay, this is, I'm not exaggerating. I couldn't think of a single time I had been hugged as a kid growing up. Isn't that crazy? Like I, I, was, I grew up in Texas and then I went to college in North Carolina and on the day I left, you know, graduated high school, packed up and left, drive, driving off to North Carolina. On the day that I left, my parents didn't hug me. They just were like, bye. <laughs> They're just like, I guess see you when you're a doctor or something. Uh, and I told a friend of mine who's white um, that I had never been hugged growing up, and he could not believe this. Because he was like, dude, I've been hugged all the time. Like, I would get hugged when I was dropped off at school, when I got picked up at school. Uh, at night, when I was tired, uh, I'd say, hey, I'm going to bed. And they would hug me and tell me they loved me. And this blows my mind. <laughs> Because this means that some Asian kids get hugged when they go to the other side of the house. And I was not hugged when I went to school on the other side of the country. <laughs> Doesn't seem fair. In summary, Asian parents suck. Um, like, they were kind of, my, my parents were kind of mean, too. Like, my dad was mean. Like, when I was a kid, uh, we had this thing that, uh, we got a quiz from school. And they're like, hey, ask someone in your family that's an immigrant these questions. And my dad's an immigrant, so I'm asking these questions. And the questions are like, um, when did you come to the US? Why did you come to the US? A whole bunch of other ones. And the last one is like, if you had to do it all over again, would you still come to the US? So my dad's an immigrant, I ask him these questions, like, when did you come to the US? Why did you come to the US? Um, and finally, with my dad, I said, if you had to do it all over again, uh, would you still come to the US? And he said, no. So fun fact, my mom and dad met in the U.S. <laughs> when, you know, they met here. They started a family here. They had children after they came to the U.S. and met. So, you know, like the nuances of this question are like pretty far reaching. So, but it's not his first language, so I explained to him. And by the way, I'm like eight years old when this happens, right? Um, I, you know, maybe he didn't understand like exactly the impact of what he was saying. So I'm like, Dad, you know, you met mom here in the US. If you didn't meet her in the US, you wouldn't have had the family, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have had me. So bearing all that in mind, <laughs> um, if you had to do it all over again, would you still come to the US? And he said, I told you no already. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that means I was such a disappointing child at eight years old that it turned my father off of the concept of America. <laughs> like, I don't know if you've ever been, like, had your parent, like, try to retroactively abort you <laughs> when you're eight years old. I'm pretty sure that's illegal now. <laughs> that's illegal. Uh, everybody caught up on Roe vs. Wade? You're not finding out now? That would be weird if you found out at this stand-up show. Uh, I just, this is all I want to say about Roe vs. Wade, is that when it happened, when it got overturned, uh, I had a lot of gay friends, as you can see, and they were on my timeline, not these guys. These guys are great. A lot of my gay friends, though, were on my timeline saying, like, oh, Roe vs. Wade's been overturned. They're coming for my marriage next. I'm sure you saw this a lot, right? You guys saw this a lot? They're coming for my marriage, oh my gosh! Abortion is legal, they're coming from my marriage. And it's like, can we let uh, women have like 90 minutes of attention <laughs> before we make this about ourselves? <laughs> and here's the thing is like, uh, I mean, I, I really don't think I'm wrong. Our marriages are fine. They are never coming for our gay marriages. And do you know why? Because a lot of uh, people that are gay married also are white. And in the history of the United States, when have they ever taken away rights from white men? No, no. No, they couldn't even make a, di a different Ghostbusters. <laughs> Without the white men being like, where's my Ghostbusters? And like, they made the one ghost, they started making the one with Kristen Wiig and that one, right? And then like, people got mad immediately. They had to be like, but we're making one for you too. Don't worry, just, can you wait 18 months please for your Ghostbusters? <laughs> Gay marriage is fine. Um, I think that's the end of my, I improvised all of that. <laughs> wow, that was pretty good.
And I didn't even get a suggestion at the top, you guys. The suggestion was, do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> suggestion was do some comedy. Okay, I'll leave you on this. Um, I said that already. <laughs> Can we stop being racist towards Asian people, please? Yeah. Woo. No. Woo. I wanted more applause for that than I got. <laughs> I got, by the way, I got tepid response from my husband for that. <laughs> He's like, that's my main thing in this marriage. <laughs> Call me your chink right before I fuck you. <laughs> That's really it gets him over the top, you guys. <laughs> we just like uh, reenact the movie Memoirs of a Gay Show. <laughs> this is all in advance. I apologize to my husband in advance. <laughs> but anyway, let's not be racist towards Asian people, okay? Because, yeah. first of all, it's annoying to me personally. <laughs> I don't like it. But it's also really weird, okay, because people are racist towards Asian people because of just this part of our faces. <laughs> you know? Like, I think it's weird I could avoid racism by buying sunglasses. <laughs> like, I could fight systemic bias, or I could write to a senator, I could march in a protest, or I could just get some Oakleys. <laughs> This joke was sponsored by Oakley. <laughs> uh, so I've been telling that joke for a little while, and a friend of mine was like, hey, why don't you get some Oakleys to show them what you're talking about? So, I got some Oakleys, you guys. Yeah. All right. uh, okay, so I'm gonna put them on. Don't be scared. <laughs> be ready for this transformation. I'm a formally trained actor, so it's going to be quite a change. All right. Okay, so right now I am Chinese. But now I'm white. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to brunch. Uh, how, how much do you love Breaking Bad? <laughs> I voted and it made a difference. <laughs> uh, you guys have been wonderful. My name is Chris Grace. <laughs>